to the in industrial sector where India is already a big uh, major in that. So again, the interest clash, we can never collaborate with China as, the, um, as you think it might be, you know? And uh, adding to that point, just to play of words, you just now mentioned why instead of just uh, going collaborating with the US, uh, we should compete with other nations which are, which are similar to us. So that's exactly what we are saying. We need to compete with a country like China. And if we are competing with a country like China, how can you say that our future rests in their hands? Okay, I, you, you put a question to them now? Oh yeah, go and get back to them. Well, basically, I'd just like to put forward a quotation. Great, uh, great achievements take place in the framework of great expectations. I'd like to just uh, like you to ponder on that. And secondly, it does depend on how much, you know, well, it's, uh, as I said, China is coming into a cooperative and strategic, um, you know, thing with India. So basically, the moment this thing comes into being and we are in a kind of uh, healthy competitive race, it does depend on how much China progresses and how much India progresses. They are interdependent, in fact. Or I'd like to remind you at a wider issue also at stake with China, what we are not saying. China is part of the wildlife trade as well. It is not only about economic growth that I said, we're not just talking about economic demographies and stuff. All right, China is um, a big major in wildlife trade. So that is affecting India as well. All right, millions are going into the wildlife trade. We are harming our economic diversity, I mean, biodiversity as such. And... Um, okay, more? right. No, just stop there, Cheyenne. Sh yeah, just... A you ask another question, just because I haven't heard from you yet. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that today's topic says that India's future lies more with America. Yeah. No, uh, no sorry, just no, the, the, more with Asian countries than the US. So we don't mean to say that we stop all our relations with the US. We never say that stop going to US um, education colleges and then get educated. What we mean to say is to have a collaboration with countries we are similar to ourselves. How Rather is China similar to us? You just explain that to me. Just hold on. Sorry. <laughs> right. He's asking you a question. Right. Yeah, go on. go on. With countries similar to ourselves, which will help us to uh, s s uh, destroy this so-called concept of unipolar world into a much more developed, informed, multipolar world. Okay, you're talking about your neighbors and stuff like that, all right? So let's take our immediate neighbors, Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, right? So in what way are they contributing to our economic development? Pakistan is contributing to opium trade, drug trafficking, which is creating worldwide global issues. All right. And uh, you're talking about China again. Tigers disappearing from our country. Uh, how is that contributing to India? And moreover, these countries like Pakistan, China, <laughs> these nations like Pakistan, China, Shh. it has been like from the recent bombings also, it has been revealed that these are the countries which are inbreeding terrorist activities in our nation and which is having its impact on the stock market. So aren't in a way they are, atta I mean, they are attacking our economy and not helping it no, to grow. No. Did you want to come back quick? Because I've got 10 chances. Well, uh, I didn't get how did China come into the uh, terrorist fray? And secondly, one more thing. The uh, topic that you brought about, about China, our tigers disappearing from uh, our country, you're bringing a totally different topic of implementation of laws and not how China is you know exactly cooperating with collaborating with India or not? Okay, all right. So just to turn it round, although it's already turned round, really. Um, can you now ask this team formally your questions, and you get ready to answer? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my first question with respect to your speech is: in your speech, you said uh, something like, uh, "When we are, in, I mean, India has something in common with China, with Pakistan, and we are all similar nations." Which I first of all disagree. But even if they are similar, and you said like they should so cooperate and they should grow as a team. So could you please explain to me, like, what do you mean to say, like, if I am a beggar, my neighbor is also a beggar, two beggars should get together and form an MNC. Like, how do you think it's possible? <laughs> Feed a man for a day. Feed a man for one time, and he shall be satisfied. Teach a man how to hunt, and he shall be satisfied throughout his life. Yeah, dude, but we're, uh, we're talking about... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. You know, the world has moved on from hunting right now. We're talking <laughs> more about relationships between... Uh, and India and Pakistan have long moved over from becoming, uh, being beggars. We can't Pakistan. call our motherland a beggar. If you want statistics, in 2001, the Indochina trade was some 3.6 billions. It nearly doubled in 2004, rising 79% from previous $13.6 billion. 
By 2005, the figure reached $18.7 billion and is expected to top $20 billion in 2006. It's such high rates of economic growth. Can you call ourselves and our neighbors a beggar? It's a real question. It's a rhetorical question. We're supposed to reach to $60 billion, $60 billion trade by the end of 2010. Just hold on. Just hold on. You asked the question. Now have the, you have to listen to what he's answering. Yeah, carry on. And we are supposed to top the $60 billion mark of trade by 2010. Okay, now, do you want to ask another question? I just have one question, all yes. right. Uh, do you know the qualifications for a BPO company? All right, that's the first thing. And how many people in India actually rely on the BPO sector? If you look at the majority of Indians, we are very highly intellectual, all right? There are doctors, there are engineers, there are businessmen, all right? The BPO company is affecting a very small part. So what has Obama's uh, decision to remove the BPO sector got to do with the Indian economy? And the large, look at the larger side. We're taking nuclear development, joint military ventures. So that is the thing that is actually strengthening our uh, India as a nation. Okay. Sorry, I beg to differ, but in the BPO sector, the IT sector, does form one of the largest, uh, the major chunk of in the Indian economy and foreign, foreign exchange. And basically what he said about, um, I, mean, I would like to get back to a point about how many about qualifications. I would just like to let, let you point about one little point. It's a big social issue, now, uh, issue nowadays. That is, you said many people, and you mentioned the point, non-residential Indians, NRIs, go abroad to USA to read, study, right? So basically, what do you think about the brain drain issue? Either. I just ponder, since I'm not uh, li liable to ask a question right now, I want to ask you the question, just ponder upon it. And secondly, uh, could you just, uh, just tell the last part of your question, because I didn't get it. It's a bit fuzzy. Do you, wanna co do you want to explain the last part of your question? Mm, no, no. I don't well, I've got one more question. I think I've got one more question. No, 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 I, no. That's it for this section. I think you might have noticed that they disagree, um, but actually I think to their credit, they've indicated this is a real tense debate with lots and lots of disagreements on the table. So very well uh, fought out, all of you actually. I was impressed. Okay.